Hello, I'm uh, Manny Bannon, Professor of Clinical Medicine at Ohio State University and Director of Cardiovascular Imaging. With me today is uh, Dr. Shabuddin Rahimatullah, who is Distinguished Professor at University of Southern California, Griffith Professor of Cardiology, and Professor of Medicine. And we are going to be talking about myocardial viability. Dr. Rahimatullah, can you um, help us understand if there is a relevance to the assessment of myocardial viability in clinical practice in 2007? Yes, Manny, it is very important. And the reason for that is very simple. All the available data shows that viable myocardium, which is dysfunctional, can be reversed with revascularization. There is little data on current medical therapy. So if there is biochemical viability, you revascularize it, you get very good patient outcomes. If there is no viability, you revascularize, then there is no difference between revascularization and medical therapy. In other words, one is essentially revascularizing leather if it is not viable myocardium. So well, it's very relevant. Well said. Um, do you think in that context there is a continuing or expanding role of the non-invasive imager in the assessment of myocardial viability? The, the role of the imager is 100%. In other words, the only methods, albeit not perfect, which are available to us for diagnosing viable myocardium are non-invasive techniques. They are going to expand as we have newer imaging techniques, more expertise in the current imaging techniques, more role into seeing what is the incremental value of another test. So it's going to be an increasing role. And the article that you are the lead author on, which is appearing in Jack Imaging, uh, titled Chronic Ischemic Left Ventricular Dysfunction, Importance of Imaging in Clinical Practice, how does that fill a gap or need for the clinical practitioner? Well, there are three parts to it, if one may think about it. The first is uh, outlaying the clinical problem. Uh, when does this occur? What is the data that it is beneficial to revascularize? Who should be revascularized? So there's a clinical end introduction, if you might so on. The second part is all the imaging techniques. With the review succinct, of the techniques that are available, and importantly, techniques which have been studied with a large number of patients from many different centers. So it is not every small little study that is there. So it is going to help the images. It's going to help the clinician focus down on the tests that need to be done. The third part of it, which I think is going to be fairly unique, in fact, is going to be unique, and that is a set of algorithms providing guidelines as to how one can proceed and the manner in which each individual test can be done. In brief, uh, you will always, always start off with echocardiography. Then the second level that is available is, of course, SPECT imaging. Then we have positron emission tomography. And then finally, we now have CMR. So each of those will be helpful. What is going to come out in the review of the test and the algorithm is that there is no single test and there is no perfect test because the pathophysiology of viable myocardium in the dysfunction I mean, is fairly complex and there is no single test that will give you the answer to this complex pathophysiologic structure that happens. If the article will provide very specific algorithms which can help the clinicians along. And also another unique feature is going to be that there is going to be a separate algorithm for somebody who is not at a big medical center and who may have a limited number of, of tests available to them, either in terms of f limitations of finance, the patients don't have insurance, or in fact, limited resources of the actual tests being available to them. And finally, uh, one of the algorithms is going to attempt to provide some guidelines between somewhat based on what you see with the diagnosis of endocarditis. Two major and one minor will tell you that it is not going to recover, or two minor and one major. This is the first such attempt 
which you lay out from the beginning when you've done these tests, what are the probability of improving function or not improving function? Thank you. I'm pretty sure it is a comprehensive piece uh, on the subject and uh, thank you for making the effort and leading the effort. Have a question or comment about a CBN story? Send us an email at cbnfeedback at acc.org.